Welcome to Getting Cozy with Houdini, brought to you by GameTutor.tv. In this particular course, we are going to go through the process of just learning how to get up to speed with Houdini, navigating, creating stuff, um, playing with the different shells over here, understanding what all these different toolbars over here do. Because having a firm understanding of how to actually work with the Houdini interface is key and really fundamental to um, how to be successful with Houdini. All right, so that's what we're going to cover. So let's actually start out with the actual scene view right here. You can see that there's this camera and this represents the actual viewport, the 3D viewport, or what they like to call the scene view over here, okay? So basically, um, in order to navigate, by default, when you first launch Houdini, you'll notice that your cursor has a little hand. And that means that you can left click and drag to orbit the scene, okay? And you can middle mouse drag to pan the scene around. And we can right click and move the mouse up and down to zoom in and out. Alrighty, so that's basically how you navigate inside of this 3D viewport. All right, so there's actually a couple of different uh, gotchas here in terms of navigation and working with the different modes inside of Houdini. So what I'm gonna do is jump over here into the network view, okay? So the network view is where we actually create all of our nodes that end up creating models and particle effects and fire and fluids and stuff like that. So over here inside of the network view, <clears throat> if I just hit tab, when I drop down a geometry node, you'll notice that we actually get a default gizmo cube, basically. Now this default cube um, is actually contained within this particular node itself, all right? And so all the nodes inside of Houdini um, actually contain data, okay? So if you start thinking of, of them like that. Now if you're coming from the Maya or the Max world and first jumping into Houdini, you can think of this geometry node or container as the uh, topmost group, okay? So what I can do is I can actually jump into this particular node. So instead of something like the outliner where I have a top group and then I have stuff inside of that group, okay? <clears throat> you double click on a node and that allows you access to all the data that's within that particular geometry node, all right? So you notice that when I jump in, I have this file node and this is just loading up the default geometry that side effect software is provided as the initial data set to use inside of that geometry container. So in most cases, you can delete this. You don't need that anymore. All right. And so now that we've learned how to jump into nodes, um, we can also, we also need to learn how to jump back out of nodes. So you, you'll notice that up here in this network view, you have this little toolbar up here. All right. And this basically uh, displays the hierarchy for you of how many levels deep you are in your node structures, okay? So to get back up to the very root of the whole scene, we just hit the OBJ button right there, and bam, we're now in the scene right here. So double click to jump in, and you'll notice we're in the scene, and then we're in the ge geometry node. And we can actually rename this, so we can call this parent node, all right? When you jump in, you see that we're in the parent node now. Cool. All right, so getting back to the gotchas that we have in terms of navigating, if I were to actually create a primitive in here, let's just create a box like so, um, and I wanted to start to edit these vertices, what I need to use is I need to start to utilize the tools over here in the left-hand toolbar in the scene view over here. All right, so I can uh, go in and select uh, certain components just like any other um, modeling package. So if I hit the select tool, you'll notice that if I hover over this particular icon right here, this is the select tool or it's S on the keyboard. This allows me to start to select components. All right, so now this gets us into the gotcha that I wanted to mention about navigation. You notice that now that I'm in the selection mode, I can't pan, I can't orbit, I can't zoom in, and I'm literally in a select mode. And this basically prevents me from rotating or orbiting my model while I'm in select mode. Now that might seem a little weird. Why can't I do both? Uh, as Maya and Max have shown us, if I just hold down the Alt key in Maya, 
That allows me to edit and rotate. So inside of Houdini, you actually have to hold down the space bar. So if you hold down the space bar, you'll notice how your, your cursor for the mouse changes from the select tool to the hand tool. And you can also see that the camera is highlighting when I hold down the space bar. So when I hold down the space bar, all my navigation works again. And then I let go of the space bar, I can now select components. All right, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you want to actually go back to just the navigation mode or camera mode, you can hit escape on the keyboard. All right, <clears throat> and that basically gets you all the way back out. So now we can't select components anymore. We can just navigate around our object. All right, so again, if I S on the keyboard, I go back into my selection mode and I can actually then just hit the escape key or I can click that camera button and that takes me back into that navigation mode. So that is the basics of working with models and um, data basically in your scene view over here. So let's jump back into the selection mode here by hitting S on the keyboard. And you'll notice that I am selecting faces. And that's all good and dandy, but what if I want to start to select vertices? Well, what we need to do is we actually need to come up here to the geometry selection mode button. Okay, we can also right click for different options or you can just hold down the uh, left mouse button and the pop-up menu will pop up. Now you notice that we can actually start to select a whole bunch of, whole bunch of different component types. So we have points, edges, primitives, vertices, just like any other 3D package. And they also have their associated keyboard hotkey. So in this case, I want to select the vertices. So I can select a vertice, a vertice, and hold down spacebar to move. And I can select a whole bunch of vertices. I can select all the vertices. And then you just click anywhere outside, and you are back to no selection. And the same goes for edges. So let's select edges. OK. So now we can select edges. And we can do operations with those particular edges. All right, so it, <clears throat> remember it's two, three, four, and then five was vertices. So one thing to also note about Houdini is that points and vertices are different. All right, and we'll get more into that when we start to build out um, some more complex objects. This course is just about getting comfy with the Houdini interface. All right. So you notice up here, I'm going to go hit escape and I'm back into my navigation. But you'll notice up here we have a bunch of different types of selection flags that we can also do. So if I uncheck uh, geometry there, go into my selection mode, I can't select geometry. So that's basically what this particular pop-up menu does. It allows us to flag on and off different selection types. So we can have cam cameras turned off, lights turned off or on, bones, nulls, blends, all that kind of cool stuff, okay? But I'm going to leave geometry on for now, and that allows me to select the, the object itself. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. I'm going to hit escape, jump back out there. All right, so let's actually go over some of these other tools over here in this toolbar. So basically what I want to do is um, let's select the move tool, or it's T on the keyboard. So if I move the, uh, or if I select the move tool and select some vertices, I can actually move those vertices around. And that allows me to start to perform different operations. All right. And so the keys I'm using to select the different transform operations over here, it's T for move, it's R for rotate, and E for scale. So pretty standard combination there of hotkeys for the different transform types. Uh, you can also hit T, I believe it is, or let's see what it is. Oh, it's enter. So I hit enter. Basically, um, what I can get is the full. <clears throat> Let me go back to. There we go. So, what I can get by en hitting enter on the keyboard, basically, that allows me to get the full um, transforms available to me. So, I can rotate and translate all at the same time. All right. So, I'm, I'm currently in object selection mode because I don't have any particular components selected. I have the geometry selected. Okay. And again, to get out of this particular mode, you hit escape on the keyboard and that gets you back to navigation mode. All right. So you notice when I was doing all those particular edits, Houdini had gone and added an edit node 
to my original box. But I can always get back to my original box, you know, as you see there. Okay, and this is really the power that Houdini brings to us when it um, when you start working with procedural modeling is our data is always non-destructive. We're just storing the different particular steps in the creation of this particular object in these particular nodes. So I can always go back and get my original data. And let's say um, I drop down a new edit node. <clears throat> All right. And feed the original box into this new edit node. Now what I can do is I can start to select some vertices. So if I hit S on the keyboard, oops, excuse me, I can start to make manipulations uh, to this stuff as well. And this is completely independent of this particular edit. So what I can do is I can actually display this version of that edit or this version of that edit. And that really is that core concept behind procedural modeling is that we can always keep the original data safe it's very non-destructive, and we can come up with multiple versions really, really quickly. All right. All right. So those are all the move tools and the selection tools and the different flags. Okay. And then we have all this snapping. And this is all pretty um, common stuff. So we can snap to grid. We can snap to curves. We can snap to points. We can basically do um, snapping to other types of objects. In this case, let's just cover um, the actual... Um, let me actually put the blue display flag on for this guy. So we'll cover the grid snapping. So you notice that this is actually going to snap to a particular grid point. There we go. Or we can do point snapping, and we can start to snap to other points, like so. There we go. All right. And all these have associated hotkeys as well. So for curve snapping, it's C. Grid snapping, it's X. And for point snapping, it's V, just like in Maya. Alrighty, so that is the basics of getting used to using the navigation view and this left-hand sided toolbar over here. And also how to start to use the, um, the network view and really brief hint at what proceduralism does for us. Okay, so finally what I wanted to do is start to cover um, what this window up here does. All right, so you'll notice that when I'm clicking on any one of these particular nodes in the network view down here, I'm getting different parameters available to me. So if I were to actually put the blue display flag on for this particular node, I can actually change the size of my box. All right, and we can come down here and you'll notice that the points are still snapped as though they're in a pyramid and the edits for this particular node down here are still live. Nothing was destroyed in the process of creating um, or updating or modifying the parameters of the original box. So again, really powerful workflow in terms of being able to utilize your modeling data um, more than once. All right. So that's what the parameter does. And you'll notice that every node um, has different parameters. So this allows us to do a lot of different things. Um, and every node has specific parameters. And we will be covering them more in depth in some of the later courses on GameTutor.tv. All right. So that, that is the basics of uh, getting cozy with Houdini in lesson one. So in lesson two, we're going to jump in even more and start um, to learn how to build our own stuff. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.